When you first start collecting records, you're likely to make a few mistakes. But being that I've already been there and done that, today I'm gonna to share with you guys the common mistakes that everyone makes so you can avoid them. Hey friends, welcome to Vinylize. I am Jarrett New, and today we're gonna list the most common vinyl mistakes that people make when they're first getting into this hobby. So before we jump in, I just wanna let you guys know that today's song of the day is Frozen by Sabrina Claudio. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day, post it below and you might see it in a future video. All right, now let's start making some vinyl mistakes. Number 10, buying a suitcase style or all-in-one record player. Now this is a very easy mistake to make because usually when you're in a retail environment, the first turntable you're likely to see is gonna be a Crosley Cruiser or something very similar. Now, if you've watched my videos, you'll already know exactly why these types of record players are bad, so I don't need to rehash all the same things I've already said. But basically, they destroy your records, are cheaply built, and have terrible sound quality. You deserve much better. Number nine, the plural of vinyl is vinyl not vinyls. Okay, this is a really minor thing, but I felt it was important enough to add to our list. So, just putting it out there. Number eight, don't touch the grooves. When handling vinyl, a lot of first time collectors make the mistake of holding it like this. This is wrong, don't do this. The proper way to hold the disc is by the edges or the label. Number seven, not aligning the cartridge. When you first buy a new record player, sometimes the cartridge is already pre-aligned from the factory, which is nice, but most of the time that's not the case and you gotta do it yourself. Also, if you skip that step, your records are gonna sound like crap because the needle is not sitting properly in the groove. So it's kinda important, and if you wanna know how to do it, be sure to check out this video that I made right up here. Number six, not cleaning your records. Records are really dirty, and there seems to be this misconception out there that they're all supposed to sound scratchy and full of pops and crackles, but the truth is vinyl can sound really good if you clean it. So if you haven't been doing that, you really should. Number five, not upgrading the paper sleeves. Most records, when you buy them, come with cheap paper inner sleeves that can actually scratch your record, which sucks. So it's a good idea to get rid of those and instead replace them with something that's softer, higher quality, and will not scratch your records. The best ones I've found are the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab inner sleeves because these things are awesome. Number four, playing 78 records with a normal stylus. Do not make the same mistake I did when I tried to play an older 78 RPM shellac record with a normal record needle because you're gonna destroy that needle. Basically, there's different needles for different types of records. Now, all of our modern records, like the ones you see on the wall behind me, can be used with a stylus that's anywhere between 0.7 and 1 mil in size. And most record needles you come across are going to be that same exact size. However, for these older 78 records, you're going to need a special record needle that's about 3 mil, so quite a bit bigger. And if you plan on playing these types of records, the best cartridge I would recommend would be something like the Grado 78E cartridge. Number three, not buying an amplifier or receiver with your turntable. A lot of times when people buy a new turntable, they think they can just plug in a pair of headphones and be good to go. That's exactly what happened to me when I first got started. But then I realized I also needed some type of amplification, like a headphone amp or a receiver. So I ended up choosing the Yamaha RS201 receiver and it's worked great for me ever since. But basically, like I've said before, you're gonna need four things to make your vinyl setup work turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. So make sure you've got all those things and you'll be good to go. Number two and a half, not balancing the tone arm. When setting up your record player, it's very important that you balance the tone arm. If your tone arm is too heavy, your needle is gonna carve up the record grooves like a steak knife through butter. But if on the other hand, your tone arm is too light, your needle would jump out of the groove and scratch your record. So it's really important that you get it just right. And if you wanna know exactly how to do that, be sure to check out my record player setup right up there. Number two, stacking records on top of each other. Never ever under any circumstances, stack your vinyl one, on top 
of the other because when you do that, the weight of the records causes them to warp, which is not good. So when you're storing them, always make sure that you stand them up vertically. Number one, not taking chances on new music. When you first go to the record shop, you're gonna see tons of albums that you're already familiar with. So it's totally normal that you would pick up those records. But every once in a while, when you've got the free time, it's really nice to just dig through the crates and maybe pick up something you've never heard of. And you don't need to spend a whole lot of money to do that. In fact, most shops usually have some kind of a discount vinyl section, and if you find something in there that maybe has a cool looking cover, buy it because you might really like it. And even if you don't, well, that's okay too because you didn't spend that much money to begin with. So overall, by taking more chances, you can discover some cool new music. Now, what do you guys think about these common mistakes and what mistakes did you make when you were first getting into record collecting? Let us all know down below in the comments so that other people won't make those same mistakes. And of course, if you love music in general, be sure to subscribe and smack that little notification bell so you won't miss the new videos. And most importantly, friends, have an awesome day and keep spinning that vinyl.